everybody, my name is Scruffy. Welcome to the channel, and today we're gonna do a short video on how to buy, hold, and farm Kopi with your ledger device on the Cardano blockchain. You may have seen our Binance video. This is kind of a companion video if you're wanting to do it on the Cardano side. So, let's head on over to the Ledger Live. Now, just to let you guys know, there are two different ways to do this. I'm gonna run through both just to show you the differences. Now, first things first, you wanna make sure that you have your Ledger Live set up. Uh, this video, we're not going to run through the entire process. There's tons of videos out there. Uh, it's pretty simple. You plug in your ledger, you run through the directions on screen. And also, uh, the other important thing is make sure that Ledger Live is completely updated. Also, if you have any firmware updates, make sure those are done as well. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is go over here to Manager tab and you're gonna to wanna to click on that. You wanna make sure that you have the Cardano application installed. Now, it's gonna want us to unlock our ledger here, so I will put in my PIN number. And once we unlock it, it shows our app catalog here. Now again, the main thing on this video we're gonna be focusing on is Cardano, so you wanna make sure you have that Cardano app installed. The next thing we're going to want to do is create a new account. So we're going to go over to accounts. You can either click on the button down here at the bottom or the pretty purple one here up at top. So we'll click add an account and it wants us to choose our crypto asset. So we're going to select Cardano. We're going to hit continue. And again, it's going to want us to verify to open up the Cardano app. We will click our buttons on the actual ledger device itself. And as you can see, app update required. Okay, they want us to uninstall and reinstall. So if you're doing it for the first time, you may not run across this, but if you've already had Ledger Live installed, uh, I'm glad we're running into this because uh, there may be a, an update that I didn't know about. Okay, now that all of our apps are updated, we are gonna go back to the accounts page. We're gonna add an account. We are again gonna select Cardano. We're gonna click continue, and it's gonna want us to open up the app. We'll verify on our ledger device. And as you can see here at the bottom, we've already got two accounts in our portfolio. This will be our third. Go ahead and name it whatever you want. You can leave it the default. I'm gonna call it Scruffy Demo. All right, so we're gonna click on add that account. We're gonna click on done. And as you can see in our list, we've got Scruffy Demo right down here at the bottom and we have that wallet created. Now we want to link it with a software wallet. Again, you can use various Cardano software wallets with Ledger. Today, we're gonna go ahead and use the NAMI wallet. So, we're gonna go ahead and open up our browser, which is already on the MinSwap page, which is where we're gonna go buy our Kobe. And we notice we've got our NAMI wallet up here at the top. We're gonna open our NAMI wallet here, and we are going to click on the little icon in the top right-hand corner. Yours may look a little bit different, but it's basically the same thing. We're gonna scroll down to connect hardware wallet and it gives us the option of Trezor or Ledger. We're gonna select Ledger obviously. We're gonna click the continue button and over in this left-hand list, you may or may not have as many things as I do, but you're looking for the one here that says Nano X paired. So we're gonna go ahead and click connect. And if you notice, there are already the other two accounts that we had created in Ledger Live, those are grayed out because we've already got those linked. So we're gonna go down here to account three, which is our Scruffy demo account. We're gonna click continue, and there you go. Successfully added accounts. Now we have our third Ledger account right there. Now, if you wanna confirm that they are the same account, we can click on receive and check out our wallet address. As you can see right here, uh, it ends in 7MH. It's kind of small, kind of hard to read, but trust me, it ends in 7MH. 
Now, if you want to verify, we can go over to Ledger. We can click on Receive. And as you can see here, the address also ends in 7MH. This is the important thing. When you're doing it through this method, these numbers will match. However, when you do it through the other method, there will be different wallet addresses. Now let's look at a second way that you can create a wallet for your Ledger device. If we go back over into NAMI, we can click on the symbol in the right hand corner here, your little robot guy. Again, probably will look different, but if we click connect hardware wallet again, and go back and select Ledger, we'll click the continue. Then we select the Nano X paired and connect. If you notice, we've got these three accounts here. Now we've only created three accounts in Ledger Live and on our Ledger device, but we can actually use NAMI to go ahead and create a fourth account. So if we click on that and we click continue and we say close, now we have yet a fourth one. It just depends on which interface you prefer to use. Do you prefer Ledger Live or do you prefer your software wallet of choice? And just a quick pro tip, I like to use the software wallet to manage my Cardano crypto as opposed to Ledger Live because it's got full support of my NFTs. And while you can store NFTs on your Ledger hardware wallet, I haven't been able to find a way to view the NFTs in Ledger Live. Now, I expect them to change this as they've already got support for Ethereum NFTs. But as of right now, I have to uh, use the software wallet for my Cardano NFTs anyway, so I just use Nami for everything. I am gonna go ahead and get rid of this account we just created, this Ledger 4 account, just to avoid confusion here. So we're gonna go there and we're gonna click delete account. Yep, we will go ahead and delete that. Now you have to fund your account. You can either go get it on one of the exchanges or perhaps you've already got some in another wallet. I've already got some in my other wallet, so I'm gonna go to my minting account, which we'll get to that as a pro tip a little bit later on in the video. I'm gonna go ahead and send 20 ADA to our Ledger 3 or Scruffy demo that we just created. So we'll go ahead and type in 20 under the amount of ADA. We'll click send and it wants us to enter our password. A quick copy and paste of the password. We'll confirm it. And we will hop on over to see whence it arrives. Okay, now that it has arrived, we've got Ada in our wallet. We're ready to buy some Kopi. We're going to go over here to minswap.org. And once we arrive on the page, we're going to click launch app. We're going to kill the pop-ups because, well, I'm not a big fan of pop-ups. Now we're going to go over here to the trade tab in the left-hand corner there. And it wants to know what currency are we going from and what currency are we going to? We are in fact going from ADA and we're gonna be going to Kopi. So we'll type in Kopi in the search box and boom, there it is. Now inside here, we can either click the max button or we can manually enter in the amount of ADA. We're gonna go ahead and click max. If you notice, even though it's showing our balance of 20 ADA, just above the ADA symbol up here. Uh, it's only allowing us to do 14. There are various fees and they have to hold some ADA back. So always go in with more ADA than you're wanting to spend, if at all possible. If you can throw in an extra five, 10, 15 ADA in there, that'll help cover some of those fees, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and buy 14 ADA's worth, which is gonna get us approximately 83 Kopi tokens. We'll go ahead and click the swap button. And this is gonna break down how much you're gonna receive, slippage tolerance, price impact. You guys can go through all of these on your own. Everything looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm the swap. All right, once again, it is going to want us to go ahead and verify. 
So we're gonna have to unlock our ledger device again. We'll click sign, confirm, and now it wants us to actually confirm the transaction on our ledger. There we go, transaction successful. Your transaction has been processed successfully. We'll go ahead and close that. And there is the record if we want to go check it out on Cardano scan. However, we can also just look into our wallet and it has not been confirmed just yet. So we'll wait for that to be confirmed on the blockchain. As you can see, it just subtracted the ADA because we are down to 1.8 ADA. Although it has not shown our Kopi tokens as of yet, but that should come momentarily. Oftentimes there's a short wait between transactions. If you are on a very high volume day, there might be a lot of people minting or some you know special event going on. It can take longer, just be patient. That is the one thing in crypto Sometimes you've got to be patient. As you can see, it has now been confirmed and verified on the blockchain. We now have our 83 and change Kopi in our NAMI wallet. Now that we've got some Kopi stored on our ledger wallet, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about farming. If we come over here to the farming tab, it gives us the option to look at various pairs. Now, if you don't know about farming, I suggest you go out, do a fair amount of research, especially look into the impermanent loss that could possibly occur when doing liquidity farming. However, if you've decided you would like to do liquidity farming, we're gonna go down here and show you how. So if we come down to the Ada Kopi pair, we're gonna go ahead and click on the stake. As you can see here, it's saying that we don't have any tokens. So we have to add some liquidity. First things first, we want to add our max Kopi. Now, if you'll notice, if we add the maximum amount of Kopi, it's saying that we have an insufficient ADA balance. So let's go ahead and add our max ADA first. We'll just put in 3.8 and it automatically adds the maximum amount of Kopi we need to add liquidity. So we'll go ahead and click on add liquidity. Now, again, if you've only got one token, you can use a zap feature, which will automatically convert the correct amount so that you can do the other. So if you come in with just ADA or with just Kopi, you can click the zap feature and it'll automatically convert it to the right amounts you need to add to the liquidity pool. So we're gonna click on add liquidity and ah, transaction failed, UTXO balance insufficient. That's because we need to have a little bit of ADA left over in order to do the transaction. All right, looks like we're gonna need to add a little bit of extra ADA here. I'm gonna send 10 more ADA over to our Scruffy demo account real quick. All right, now that we have 12 ADA in there, we should probably be able to get away with five ADA and 29.860831 Kopi. We're gonna go ahead and add our liquidity. There we go. Now it's gonna want us to sign the transaction. So make sure you have your ledger device unlocked. I'm gonna do that now. We're gonna click sign, connect ledger, and it's gonna want you to confirm the transaction. So we'll do that on our ledger device. And there we go, transaction successful. Your transaction has been processed successfully. Again, it may take a minute for it to update on the blockchain. And as you can see, now our order is showing as complete. So let's go take a look at our liquidity. If we go to the liquidity tab over here and go to the very bottom, your liquidity, it is gonna show our current standing. If we do the little drop down, we can see pooled ADA is 4.999999. 
pulled Kobe is 29.860828. And if you see our liquidity pool tokens, that is sitting at 12,103,966. Let's just assume that we have gone away for some period of time. We've come back. We're ready to extract our Kopi and our ADA. All we have to do is click on the remove button. We're going to remove 100% over here. Again, if you want to remove 25, 50, 75, you can remove any amount that you want, but today we're going to go ahead and remove all of it. If we click on the remove liquidity button, again, it's going to ask us to sign. Make sure that your ledger is unlocked. So I'll put the pin in one more time and it's going to want us to confirm on the actual ledger device. Once we do that, you can see transaction successful. Again, we can click on our recent transaction tab over here. If we wanted to, we could view it on Cardano scan, but I prefer to just go over to my wallet and look. Now, as you can see right now, we've got approximately five ADA, approximately 53 Cornucopias tokens left, and it's still showing our liquidity pool tokens. But once the blockchain updates, these liquidity pool tokens will be traded in for our ADA and Cornucopias tokens, respectively. There we go. They have been traded in. And now we have received our Kopi and our ADA back from our farming. And after that, you can do with it what you will. All right, now let's talk about NFTs. Honestly, the process is about the same as with the software wallet. There's just one extra verification step that you're going to have to go through on your Ledger wallet anytime that you do a transaction. Also, pro tip, make sure you create yourself a software wallet that's used specifically for minting and purchasing things on JPEG store. I found it extremely handy to just be able to transfer funds and NFTs back and forth. I transfer the funds to the software wallet, make the purchase or mint the NFT, and then transfer the NFTs to my hardware wallet for safe storage. Again, the process is generally the same even if you do want to purchase things with your hardware wallet. I have heard of some people coming into some problems. If you do have a problem, try creating a brand new wallet or again, use that previously mentioned minting wallet. Hope that covers all your questions. If not, leave me a comment down below. Also, don't forget to like or subscribe if you found anything helpful, interesting, or useful in this video. Don't forget to turn on notifications. It really helps out the channel and lets you be informed as soon as we come out with new content.